If you're in the market for an FPV goggle around $300, I'm thrilled to tell you that Fat Shark is back in the game. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you're looking to spend as much money as you possibly can on FPV goggles, then there's basically two choices for you right now. One is the Fat Shark HDO, which comes in around $500, and the other is the Orca FPV-1, which is not out for retail yet. It's still in Kickstarter, but it looks like it's shaping up to be around $650. But if, like most people, you're on a budget, you actually are kind of spoiled for choice. Because in the $300 to $350 price range, there's a lot of goggles. Eosheen, EV200D, Skyzone, the new Skyzone Sky02S, uh, Elmway Commander has a new one out. $300 to $350-ish dollars really seems to be a sweet spot for goggle performance versus value. And that makes life pretty hard for you. Where is the Fat Shark goggle that comes in around $300 to $350? It used to be the Dominator V3, and Fat Shark stopped making it. And that has been a really notable absence until today. This is the Fat Shark Attitude V5, and it puts Fat Shark right back into the budget goggle game. Now we're going to go over the specs of this goggle, and we're going to compare it to goggles like the Eosheen EV200D, the Skyzone Sky02S, the Elmway Commander V1S, and those goggles are going to beat this one on some specs, and, and it's going to beat them on other specs. But before we do that, I want to make a, an argument to you as to why this might be the goggle you should buy, even if it doesn't win on a particular spec that you care about. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pretend that you bought this goggle and then three months later, it, it broke. And I want you to reach out to support. Contact Fat Shark Support. Pretend to be a, like don't lie, but pretend to be a customer. Say, hey, I have a question about my goggles. Can you help me? Contact Skyzone Support. Contact Elmway Support. Contact Eosheed support. I'm laughing, but I'm not joking. I'm serious. If you're shopping for goggles, do this as an exercise and see how that shapes your buying experience. Because here's the thing. You're going to buy these goggles. They're probably going to work. And if they're DOA, whoever you bought them from will probably take them back and send you another set. But a month, two months, three months, six months, a year from now, if they break, then what? And if you buy from anybody but Fat Shark, you are probably out of luck. So you got to ask yourself, when you spend $300 on a set of goggles, is that a one-time purchase? And if they break six months from now, you just buy a new one? If so, buy whatever you like. But if six months, a year, two years, five years from now, you're going to need a new DVR board, a replacement optics module because you accidentally let the sun shine in them, or just whatever else goes wrong, only Fat Shark is going to have your back. And for many of you, I think that's going to make going to mean this is the goggle that you should buy regardless of the specs. Okay, impassioned plea over. Let's get on to the specs. The Attitude V5 has OLED micro displays. This gives richer colors and better contrast compared to the LCD displays used in other goggles. The $500 Fat Shark HDO was the first FPV goggle to have OLED displays. It's really exciting to see Fat Shark bringing this technology to such a budget priced goggle. One concern that people have about OLED displays is that they can be prone to burn in. And people ask, since I've got my OSD on my goggles in the same position all the time, are my goggles going to burn in? The HDO has been out for over a year now and we haven't heard any reports of burn in. And I think there's two reasons for this. One is, I'm guessing that Fat Shark knows this is an issue and spec'd OLED displays with a usable lifespan long enough that we wouldn't experience burn-in. But the other thing is this, compare the usage of like an OLED computer monitor or cell phone screen to something like your Fat Shark goggles. How many hours of use do you really put on them in a week, a month, a year? Even if you're flying all day, you probably only put a couple hours of use of actual on time on the goggles. I mean, you've got to charge packs. How many packs do you even have? So even if you fly a lot, like 
two or three or four times a week, you're maybe only putting six or eight hours of use on the OLEDs, and that just isn't that much compared to the usable lifespan of these goggles. Now, the resolution of the screens is 600 by 400, which is going to turn some people off. I was going to say that's not enough resolution. I've always said that VGA resolution is the minimum that I personally want to see on an FPV goggle, because here's the thing. What's the resolution of your actual camera feed? Oh, my camera's 1,200 lines. Yeah, but no, 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 no. It's an NTSC or PAL standard definition feed, and it turns out that there's about 640, maybe a little more, not much more, so if you have 800 by 600 or 900 something resolution, you can get a little bit more detail out of the image. But my opinion has always been that 600-ish lines of resolution is the minimum and it meets that standard. As we talk about resolution, can I invite you to take a closer look at this footage? This is a GoPro recording at 4K resolution pointed straight into the screen of the goggles. You are getting as close as you can get to sticking your face right in these goggles. And what I want you to see here on the left, that is the Attitude V5. And on the right is an unnamed goggle with 854 by 480 resolution. Now, which of these would you say has a higher resolution screen? The one on the left just has more detail. And I want to point this out to you because you're going to shop around for goggles and you're going to see goggles advertising different resolutions. That does not tell the whole tale. And this is very hard to communicate when you're doing reviews. There's goggles out there with 1080 resolution and do they look better than the 600 by 400 resolution of the Attitude V5? Uh, maybe. Just in terms of, but not necessarily. And that's at least worth keeping in mind. That shark has a damn good looking screen on this. No matter what the specs say, this is a damn good looking image. The other thing about the screens is that Fat Shark is listing them as having 4.3 resolution. But if you do the math, 600 by 400, you'll see that that isn't a 4.3 aspect ratio. And it's not a 16.9 widescreen aspect ratio either. And I've put these goggles up to my face and compared like my HD3s, which are a 4.3 screen, to these. And I don't think they're 4.3. But what are they? I'm not actually sure. The other major spec that we got to talk about is the field of view. And in case you're new here, that is how big the screen appears to be when you put the goggles on your face. Higher field of view gives a larger screen that takes up more of your vision. At a certain point, though, an excessively large field of view starts to extend into your peripheral vision. That makes it more immersive, but it also means that you have to move your eyes around to see things. So some, it's very much a personal thing. Many racers prefer a smaller field of view because they can just see the whole screen all at once without moving their face. And you don't have to look down to see your OSD. Some other pilots prefer a much, much larger field of, field of view, which gives a more sort of cinematic experience. In my opinion, a 30 degree field of view is about the minimum that's really usable for FPV. If we think about like the old EV100 goggles from Eosheen, they had like a 22 degree, 24 degree field of view. And although they had a high resolution screen, the dang thing was like looking at a postage stamp at the end of a toilet paper roll. I will say that for me, at least, I did have a little bit of blurry edges when using this goggle. In other words, if I use the IPD adjustment to move the screen left or right, the very lower left or lower right corner of the screen was always just a little bit blurry. I do need to acknowledge that I have corrective lenses, so I may not be the exact perfect customer for this. I also need to acknowledge that my IPD, interpupillary distance, is, to, is about one millimeter wider than fat shark goggles typically support. So I'm a little bit outside the expected use case for these. Speaking of IPD, the IPD is 59 to 69 millimeters. So if you're outside that, if you've been hoping that Fat Shark would release a goggle with a wider IPD, this isn't that goggle. And if you have glasses and you've been wondering, can I use these with glasses? No. Fat Shark has another set of, of box style goggles, the Recon and the Scout, which I'll be covering in another video. If you're going to use these goggles and you have glasses, what, what you got to do is you got to get these diopter inserts. Now, if you have a simple prescription, like just you're just a little nearsighted, you can get minus two, minus four and minus six diopter plastic lenses for about 20 bucks 
and they go right in there. But if you have a complicated prescription like me with astigmatism and such, I cannot recommend these enough. These will change your freaking life. They just slide right in here and it's like wearing your glasses and you have never seen the goggles so clear and so clean. I'll put links down in the video description. There are two companies I commonly use uh, to, to use these. I commonly recommend and go get these if you have glasses. Another thing I love about the Attitude V5 is that they've started including this 18650 battery case. In other words, this is not a lipo pack that will be crappy for a while and then wear out and then be dead, but it is a, a plastic shell that you put 18650 lithium ion cells in. The downside is you will need to buy a couple of these. The upside is that these guys can be had really cheap. You get a charger for these and you just drop them in the charger. They charge. If you're in the middle of a day of flying and your pack gets low, you just really easily just swap them out for a fully charged set. This is what I've been, I switched to these and it's just so much easier than dealing with lipos. I love it. It's also got a button you can push to see the charge status is fantastic. So it's great that they've included this. As you can tell from the fact that there are two antennas on here, this is a diversity goggle. And this is actually the first attitude goggle to support diversity. Very exciting. It does come with a patch and an omni antenna. Be nice if they included a right angle adapter here instead of making you bend this thing, but it's not the end of the world. The receiver is Fat Shark's OLED receiver, which was first announced with the Attitude V4, and it gets the job done. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I've actually ever range tested this. Maybe I will, but it gets the job done. It probably doesn't, you know, break any records. It does support all the common bands, so it sports race band, A, E, L, L band, AV in, that's for external input of some kind through the AV port, and F band, Fat Shark band, of course. And since I know some of you are wondering this, yes, you can use rapid fire with this. If you prefer to buy these goggles and put rapid fire in it, that is an option. Now, some of you are going to be a little bit surprised to hear me being so positive about the Attitude V5 when I was, shall we say, underwhelmed with the Fat Shark HDO. And the HDO is a much better goggle than the Attitude V5, but it's a $500 goggle and this is a $300 goggle. And therein lies the rub. When the HDO came out, I expected more from a top of the line goggle and I didn't get it. It's good, but like for $500, could I have had a power button? I guess not. But you release a $300 goggle like this and when you look at what else is out there in the $300 price, I mean, there's goggles that cost $350, $360 that I think this is a better goggle than them. So I am really happy with where Fat Shark has decided to slot in with the Attitude V5. And the fact that this is coming in at a price of $300 makes it so, and that includes the module, that includes the antennas, it includes the 18650 case. I think that at that price point, some of the things that some people and some other reviewers are going to complain about, I am willing to forgive. So then that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the final question, should you buy it? And here, here's how I would sum this up. If what you care about is getting a good overall experience with the best after sale support in the industry, then the Fat Shark Attitude V5 is the one you should get. If you're interested in using rapid fire, which in my opinion is the best module you can get, but you don't want to spend $500 on a set of HDOs and you want to make 100% sure that the goggle you buy is compatible, fully compatible with the rapid fire, this is the one you should get. If what you're interested in is a big image overall, then I think the Eosheen EV200D is the obvious choice in this price range. These goggles have huge image and a much higher resolution screen. The downside is that the quality of the image, in my opinion, is not as good at the sort of edge to edge color fidelity and getting the image perfectly centered in your vision. So that giant image doesn't have blurry edges is also a little bit more difficult. The EV200D also has quadversity, two different sets of receivers for four antennas, which helps it make up, I mean, these aren't the best receivers in the world, but when you have four antennas you can hang off it, it does help make up some of the difference. The other two you might be looking at are the Elmway Commander V1S and the Skyzone Sky O2X. And I think where both of these two fit in is that they are just a kind of all-in-one package. Between the two, 
I think I would take the Sky Zone because overall Sky Zone has, I think, a better track record of build quality and customer support than the Elmway, although many people have bought Elmway Commander as their first goggles and have enjoyed them and used them for a long time. But enough about all these other goggles. This is a review of the Fat Shark Attitude V5. And I'm I'm just could not be happier to find Fat Shark back in the game at the three hundred dollar price point. Whether you agree with my argument about why Fat Sharks are the goggles that you should buy, I they gotta be. I was so disappointed that they just abandoned the three hundred dollar market, and so I'm really happy that you at least have the option to decide. What do you think? Is the power button a deal breaker? Would you rather have something like a cool water transfer case? Anyway, there are links to these goggles down in the video description. And I have a review of the EV200D. I need to update the review because they've made a couple changes. Um, and I'm working on review of the Skyo2X and the Commander V1S now. Although I'm not sure how much more I'm going to have to say about them that I didn't already say in my previous review. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. and. Happy flying.